Nope, it doesn't work. Our previous video got a lot of attention. It even got featured on Hackaday, which is awesome. And we would have never expected that to happen. So we decided to make a follow-up video. We read a lot of the comments and wanted to address some further issues with this crappy windmill. This comment points out that the charge controller that was being used was not a real MPPT controller, which is probably true and that's stuff for another video. But the thing is that even though it might be a PWM controller, it is capable of handling the little power that's coming from this wind turbine. It will be less efficient. The problem was there was no power going into the charge controller. Another comment pointed out that the generator was producing AC voltage and needed to be hooked up to a specialized charge controller. While true, it is an AC generator, it has a built-in rectifier, which is shown in the first video. It doesn't need a special controller. All rectifiers are essentially a diode bridge which is shown in this diagram. I also pulled up the data sheet of these diodes. Surprisingly, they are good for 3 amps each. Combine them together and we get 108 watts of power this bridge rectifier can handle. This comment is from Hackaday and it's rather good. I agree with the statement. Aluminium coils are in fact used in a lot of electric motors as a cost-effective alternative to copper. The problem, however, is the diameter of the coils in this particular generator. If the connections were bad due to the oxide layer of aluminium, we would expect to have big differences in output readings between generators. If we look at the power output of the other channels that tested this generator, we can say that they are pretty much all the same. So is it worth modifying then? First off, I tried finding a solution with off-the-shelf components. We need something about the same size. So I got a lot of these car alternators lying around. They are, in fact, a three-phase AC generator with a bridge rectifier built in. I took one of the coils out and fitted it around the rotor. But the rotor diameter is too small and we end up with a massive air gap. I was curious if it could actually make some power, so I tested it anyway but it's not very efficient and delivers about 0.4 volts. It probably makes about 1.5 volts, but it loses some voltage across the diodes. I want to go back to the basics of electricity production for a minute. The only way to generate electricity is to move a straight conductor through a magnetic field. The con conductor has to move from the top of the screen to the bottom. This will induce a current in the conductor. Now let's look at the rotor from the car alternator. This one uses electromagnets, but that's not the point. Look how wide the claws are in relation to the coil windings. It's only in these parts of the wire that we can produce electricity. Now let's have a look at the rotor and coil from the windmill. See how narrow the rotor is in comparison to the coil? Only one third of the length is being used. It is possible to make a new rotor with taller magnets, like this guy has done on his channel. My guess would be it could make somewhere around 50 watts by doing so, but the price of decent magnets will cost about the same as the whole windmill. There is one more thing I'm going to try, and that's sticking on a complete car alternator. These require much higher RPMs, so I found a pulley from a washing machine and I'm going to drive it with a V-belt. Unfortunately, when I put it up, we didn't get more than one to two go force. The break over wind speed is much higher now, but this brings in another problem. The blades on this turbine have a very odd shape. They are also round, which means less surface area. I strongly believe they are not tested in any way and only designed to make it look like some kind of fancy technology. One last thing I'd like to point out about vertical axis windmills, and particularly this one, is the propulsion efficiency, closely resembling a cup type anemometer, which has a peak efficiency of 8% to convert wind energy into mechanical energy. There's only one thing I can say, and that is, it's flawed by design. So save your money on this one, and start building your own. 
I do still want to try and build my own windmill from scratch. So in the next video, I will be showing what generator I'm planning to use. I already designed the turbine blade and I'm planning on cutting it on my CNC rotor. See how that goes. Well that's it for this video, so subscribe if you'd like to see more and as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.